our VLC. We offer value, providing you with quality review programs and online seminars that bring out the best in you. At VLC, we listen. Adapting to the times, we brought our in-demand on-ground review lectures online with our virtual law companion. Subscribing to this online learning platform means you get 24-7 access to our updated video lectures and bar review notes from the best and most respected lecturers and professors. At VLC, we collaborate working with the best technology providers through our learning management system to best prepare you for the first ever digitalized bar exams. We work hand in hand with legal experts you can trust, providing top-notch services to those who need it the most through our free online legal consultations and free lecture series. Value, listen, and collaborate. This is the VLC way, and we are VLC.
Only and just me, Yeshua says, Warren to Warren to Christ, nobody else. That is very important. And before it just me, he should search war and to war and to press what are the requirements. First, there may be trouble cause. Number two, to be determined personally by the judge. Number three, after examination under oath for the complainant and the witnesses may produce. Number four, particularly describing the search, place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized or arrested. Those are the requisites before a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest. But first of all, take note, only a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest, nobody else. That's why uh, it's still pending on the Supreme Court now, diba? Article 3, paragraph 3 of the family code, we have the provision for a marriage ceremony. Now, in our jurisdiction, we do not recognize unceremonial marriages. There must be a marriage ceremony. The minimum requirement is that the contracting parties must personally appear before the solemnizing officer and personally declare that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of at least two witnesses of legal age. Now, even assuming that there was no uh, witness here, the marriage will also remain valid. That will be considered a mere irregularity that will not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, under Article 26, Paragraph 1 of the Family Code, all marriages solidified. within the contemplation of Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code as a general rule, threat to spouse, that is threat, that is a felony. Tinatok mo sa saktan eh, papaluin eh. Pero in this case, the threat to spouse is a justified threat to spouse due to the circumstance of no? uh, defense of property. And second, the threat to spank was made in the exercise of a right under the self-help doctrine, Article 429 of the Revised Penal Code. Owner, owner or lawful possessor of a thing has the right to exclude others from the enjoyment or disposal thereof. And for this purpose, they may use force which is reasonably necessary to pre prevent or repel an act. Issuals of a warrant of arrest is to follow blindly the finding of probable cause by the prosecutor. Precisely because the prosecutor determines probable cause for the filing of the information in court, whereas the judge determines probable cause for the issuance of a warrant of arrest. So, okay, right? Pero sa issuance ng search warrant, as mentioned, it should be proven. In other words, my friends, the judge must personally conduct an examination of the complainant and the witnesses um, that they may produce under oath or affirmation. The examination by the judge must be proven. Okay? It is not enough to merely adopt the questions and answers asked by the, by a, by the previous uh, investigator during the PI. Magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kailangan po the judge should personally examine the complainant and the witnesses. So these are the...
Good day to our dear attendees from different parts of the country. I pray that you're all in a great state of health. This free webinar is streaming live via the Villales Law Center's YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you can hear my voice clearly, please type in the comment section hashtag VLC. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Optimize this learning opportunity. Share this free online lecture to your friends and together learn at the comfort of your homes. I want to formally welcome you all to this free webinar. This part of a series of free online lectures brought to you by the Virtual Law Companion of Villages Law Center. Allow me to share to you this good news. The Virtual Law Companion is the newest innovation of Villages Law Center, which aims to provide an easy, convenient, and quality bar review experience. The Virtual Law Companion is a web application that is hosted on a dedicated cloud server. It can be accessed via the internet 24 7 through any web browser using any device or handheld computers like Android or iOS phones. Meaning, you can study anytime, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Please visit our website at www.villagislawcenter.com to know more about our programs and activities. Before we formally start, please take note of some reminders. First, this free webinar is pre-recorded to ensure the uninterrupted streaming of lectures. Secondly, VLC team will be with you to assist you should you need more information about our program. Please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Without further ado, please give your virtual class and welcome our lecturer today. Again, this free webinar is brought to you by our virtual law companion. Maraming salamat po. Together, we can make things happen. Together, Weekend. Our lecturer graduated with Bachelor of Science in Commerce, major in Accounting, at the University of Santo Tomas in 1988, Finished his Bachelor of Laws at the San Sebastian College Recoletos de Manila School of Law in 1993. He graduated with Master of Laws from the PLM Graduate School of Law in 2016. Presently, he is a candidate for Doctor of Civil Law from University of Santo Tomas Graduate School of Law. He is the current Pilot Law Dean of the Thomas Claudio College's College of Law, in Morong, Rizal. He is also a Professor of Law at the University of the Philippines College of Law, University of the East College of Law. San Sebastian College Recoletos de Manila School of Law, New Era University College of Law, Bulacan State University College of Law, Tarlac State University School of Law, teaching various law subjects. He is also a lecturer in mandatory continuing legal education seminars, and a sought-after bar reviewer of various review centers. He is a book author of various law books published by Central Book Supply Incorporated among which is the 2000 Rules of Criminal Procedure, Notes and Cases, 2017 edition, with a copy available at the Harvard Law School Library, USA. He is a recipient of various awards, to wit, Natatanging Abode on Bulacano, awarded by the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, Get Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Bulacan Chapter, given in 2017, 2018, and 2021, Buyani at Mayronal Na Graduate awarded by the Ariga Central School, Ariga City, Camarina Sur, given in 2004. He is also the managing partner of Moya Apolola Barley Law Firm located in Quezon City. 
Without further ado, let us all welcome Dean Salvador and Moya the second. Okay, uh, good afternoon, my dear reviewers. Uh, I was assigned and tasked by the Villasis Law Center, and uh, this is now my fourth year as part of the Villasis Law Center. Now, as you can see uh, in the whiteboard, uh, makikita natin, this is MTC, okay? Then RTC, then you have Court of Appeals, nasa kanan yung Court of Tax Appeals, there are two divisions, first and second, and you have the bank. At your left is the Sandigam Bayan, ah, ah, mayroong seven divisions, okay? Then pagdating mo ngayon dito, this is the Supreme Court, okay? First, second, third, and you have the bank. Now, Comelec nasa kaliwa, then Commission on Audit nasa kanan. Comelec, there are two divisions. Uh, ito yung tinatawag na MOYA 3 in Civil uh, Procedure. Now, ano ba nako-cover niya? It covers Rule 40. Okay? Then, Rule 41, in so far as the RTC is concerned, you have also Rule 42. Uh, if the RTC is in the exercise of its affiliate jurisdiction, then you have also Rule 43, in so far as quasi-judicial bodies are concerned. So, the most popular quasi-judicial body is the Civil Service Commission. Now, in so far as Rule 44 is concerned, uh, this is the procedure in the Court of Appeals, uh, appellate procedure. Okay? Then, in so far as the Supreme Court is concerned, uh, Rule 45. Now, bakit nalipat dito yung 64 and 65? Uh, so, it involves the Commission on Election and the Commission on Audit. Now, we begin with jurisdiction. Ah, laging tinatanong, what is jurisdiction? So, jurisdiction is the power of the court to try and decide cases. Jurisdiction is vested by the Constitution and by law. Now, maraming law student, ah, ah, bar reviewers and even lawyers, lagi nilang sinasabi, jurisdiction is vested by law. Now, if I am your professor in remedial law, mayroong kang minus one o minus two. Uh, depending upon my mood, kung uh, naituro at naipagitgitan ko sa iyo yan, dapat kabisado mo. Lagi ninyong uunahin yung Constitution. Now, what is the reason for that? Because the Constitution is the fundamental law of the land. Okay? All laws in case of conflict with the Constitution uh, must ban. Uh, jurisdiction of the Supreme Court uh, is vested by Article 8 of the Constitution. Okay? So, let us now start. Now, remember uh, that uh, the jurisdiction of the first and second level courts uh, was amended by RA number 115 CPEC on August 21, uh, 2020. Uh, so, na na. So, Punta tayo rito. I want you, uh, viewers, uh, na kabisaduin ninyo ito. For the reason that 25%, dalawa kasi ito, uh, Moya 3 in Civil Procedure and Moya 3 in Criminal Procedure. Now, this is the Moya 3 uh, in Civil Procedure. Okay? So, wala nang distinction ngayon uh, sa MTC. ang jurisdiction ng NPC in so concern. Uh, uh, so, okay? Uh, ang jurisdiction niya ay 2 million pababa. Kaya mayroong aro. Okay? Uh, to see of interest space. Now, in so far as real actions are concerned, ano ang sukatan? Ha? Assess value. Okay? Ano dapat ang assess value? 400,000 pababa. Ha? Now, in the absence of assess mo ngayon, ang pupwedeng maging source. Ha? So, you have the zonal valuation. In the absence of the zonal valuation, ano ang pwede? Documents executed by the parties. Now, wala pa rin ito. Ha? 
Then, value of the property of adjoining owners. <clears throat> okay? Absent allegation ah, of this assessed value, zonal valuation, ah, documents executed by the parties, ah, or value of the property of adjoining owners, then the case is vulnerable to this for so one two section 12 letter a paragraphs one to three of rule 15 now remember that rule 16 was already deleted uh, as, as to whether a motion to dismiss will be part the answer must be yes provided it is covered uh, by section 12 number one uh, uh, letter A, 1 to 3. What are these grounds for motion to dismiss? One is lack of jurisdiction uh, over the subject matter. Two, latest pendentia. Three, uh, res judicata. And four, prescriptions. Now, all other grounds as provided by Rule 16 shall be alleged as an affirmative defense or defense. Okay? Now, second, in certain regional trial court, wala na rin distinction. Uh, 76. So, 2 million plus 1. Okay? Real action, uh, 400,000 plus 1. Uh, so, yun na lang ang difference. Uh, wala na ng RTC Metro Manila, RTC Pro, wala na. Okay? Hindi na ninyo, hindi na kayo mahihirapan ipinag-fix na ng bagong batas. Kasi wala namang pinag-iba kung may utang ka sa provincia or may utang ka ah, sa Metro Manila. May lupa ka sa Metro Manila. Ah, so there is no more distinction. So, these are the jurisdictions ah, in so far as personal action, real action of the first and second level courts. Okay? Now, this is the combination of jurisdiction and appeals. Okay, now, Rule 40 ah, sa kumpanya MTC. Now, remember that MTC also ah, includes RSP ah, and small claims. Or MR is a prohibited pleading. Otherwise, if it is not covered by the RSP, MR is a prohibited pleading. So, assuming major from MTC na talo ka, of course you want to go to the RTC. How do you appeal? Ah, akyat ka rito. Ah, merely by filing a notice of appeal plus payment of docket fee. How many days do you have within 15 days? So therefore, kailangan perfected mo ito. Ah, nag-file ka ng notice of appeal sa loob ng labing limang araw. And you pay the corresponding docket fee. Now, if the case is covered uh, by uh, the regular procedure, you can still file a So, upon the denial of your MR, mayroong ka 15 days. Okay? So, uh, notice of appeal, uh, payment of docket fee sa loob ng limang araw. Now, assuming that the case is an ejectment suit, so, uh, mayroon pang kasunod na requirement ito. If there is an award of back rentals uh, under Rule 70, okay? Posting of a supersedious bond in order to stop the execution. Otherwise, uh, the, the decision, uh, so ang tatandaan ninyo, if the case is originally filed, originally filed. So ano juristic more than 2 million pagka personal action? Ha? Uh, then more than 100,000 kapag ka real action. Now remember, even if the case is covered by the RSP, once the case is elevated to the RT, it is now covered by the regular procedure. Natalo ka sa RTC, MR mo denied. Okay? Now, you want to appeal the case. If originally filed with the RTC, you want to go to the Court of Appeals, you merely file notice of appeal plus payment of docket fee within 15 days. Okay? What rule? 41. Okay? Now, 
How about if the RTC is in the exercise of its appeal jurisdiction? Meaning, from MTC, you appeal the case to the RTC and the decision was affirmed. Huh? So what rule will you be using? You'll be using Rule 42. Okay? Now, from RTC, in going to the Court of Appeals, ano ang gagawin mo? Okay? RTC now is in the exercise of its appeal jurisdiction. Meaning, natalo ko sa MTC, umakyat ka sa RTC, ah, affirm yung decision. You file a petition for review under Rule 42. Ah, then you have 15 days. Okay? Ah, so, recon from the denial of your motion for reconsideration. Ah, plus payment of docket fee. Now, is it extendable? The 15 day period. Now, the answer is yes. You can file a motion for extension within 15 days plus payment of docket fee. Ha? So, perfected ngayon. Ha? Kasi, nag-comply ka. Okay? Now, remember that you need to file the motion for extension within the 15 day period, not after the 15 day period. Ha? So, kung nag-file ka ng motion for extension beyond the 15 day period, the decision affirmed by the RT from the MTC becomes final and executory. Okay? Now, akit ka ngayon sa Court of Appeals. Ah? Now, yung procedure, andito. Ah? Number of copies, ilan ang ipapile mo, ano gagawin mo, sinong ipapurnish mo. These are all provided by 44. Ah? So, assuming that the decision was again affirmed ah, by the Court of Appeals, now, you want to go to the Supreme Court. Ah? Aakyat ka ng Supreme Court. Paano kang aakyat? Okay? So, anong rule ang gagamitin? 45. Okay? Purely question of law. PQL. Ah? How many days do you have? You have 15 days. Ah? Is the 15-day period appealable? Answer yes. Plus 30 equals rule 45. Ah? 45 Days. Ah? What should you do? Ah? Motion for extension plus payment of docket fee. Okay? So you need to comply. Ah? Ah, maximum niya pagka 45 ah, ay 45 days din. Okay? Provided you also file a motion for extension within the 15 day period and you need to pay the corresponding docket fee. Ah, then the case will be elevated ah, to the Supreme Court, raising purely question of law. Now, exception to the rule, ah, babalik ako rito. If the case is an ejectment suit galing sa MTC na inakyat mo sa RTC, ah, you can only stop the execution up to the RTC level. Ah, pag nag-comply ka nito, ah, now, you can raise it to the Court of Appeals up to the Supreme Court provided you can stop the execution if there is a TRO or injunction issued either by the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court. Otherwise, uh, if no TRO or injunction is issued, uh, the decision shall be executed. Uh, kasi covered yan ng rules of summary procedure. Okay? So, maliwanag tayo doon ang sa Supreme Court. So, 40, 41, 42. Now, in so far as Rule 43, is concerned, ah, COMELEC, CSC, and COA are constitutional bodies created by the Constitution. However, nagtataka kayo, bakit yung COMELEC nandun sa taas sa kayong COA? Bakit yung civil service nasa baba? Now, those who have less in life must have more in law. As sino ba involved sa civil service? These are ordinary employees. Okay? Yung mga ordinaryong empleyado lang. Ha? Uh, napapailan ng kaso sa civil service commission. Ha? So, under the doctrine of double affiliate review, uh, if you lose in the Civil Service Commission, you can go to the Court of Appeals by filing a petition for review. Uh, now, 
How many days do you have? You have original of 15 days. Is it extendable? Yes. Ah, by another 15 days. What should you do? Motion for extension plus payment of docket fee. Ah, you must comply it within the 15-day period so that you can be given an extension of another 15 days. Ah, ah, you can now file your petition for review ah, up to the maximum of 30 days. Okay? Now, if you lose again in the Court of Appeals, affirm your decision ng civil service, you can also go to the Supreme Court under Rule 45. So, this same period, nung nandito. 15, original, uh, extendable to 30 days, provided you file a motion for extension and you pay the corresponding docket fee, then you will be given an extension of 30 days or a total of 45 days under Rule 45. Okay? So, klaro tayo rito sa civil service. Ah, now, tapusin na civil service tayo sa sandigang bayan sa kasa. Ito ang naging mabenta during the uh, disqualification cases was filed against BBM. Uh, they were all dismissed and now raised to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court lately did not issue any TRO, status quo anti-order or injunction. And uh, the uh, BBM he will be assuming the office of president uh, uh, whether we like it or not. Now, first and second division. If you lose in the first or second division, you, you cannot go to the Supreme Court directly. Huh? You need to file a motion for recon. Okay? How many days do you have? You have 15 The decision of the division uh, is affirmed by the Comelec in bank. It is immediately executory. Uh, now, under the Constitution, uh, there is no more appeal. It is now final and executory. Kaya nga, covered siya ng Rule 64 uh, in relation to Rule 65. Bakit? Because your ground, uh, you have uh, grave abuse of discretion. God. Ah? So from the uh, in-bank of the Commission on Election, you go to the Supreme Court also in-bank. If you will observe, ah, under Rule 64, if it involves uh, Comelec and COA, ah, they are all ah, in-bank. Ah? Now, Vox Populi, Vox Day. Ah? Now, from the Comelec in-bank, how many days do you have in order to raise ah, to the Supreme Court? By a petition for certiorari, ah, you have 30 days. Okay? Now, is it extendable or does the NAPES rule apply ah, in a Rule 64 in relation to a Rule 65 petition? Answer, no. For the reason that the 30-day period ah, is given, ah, is provided by the Constitution, and therefore, the rules of court Ah, cannot amend or even the jurisprudence of the Supreme Court cannot amend the provision of the court. absent any TRO and or injunction issued ah, by the Supreme Court the decision of the Commission on Election is final and executory okay so wala ka nang magagawa doon there must be a TRO and or injunction ah? now Actual case that I have bundled, ah, Villarosa, Oseta Palis Villarosa versus Commission on Election ah, and Romulo de Mesa Pistin. Ah, it, in bank decision regarding the election protest ah, in San Jose, Occidental Mindoro. Court saying ah, that from the first division or is creating by the Comelec, you cannot go to the Supreme Court in audit. Now, dito sa COA, ah, tatlo lang ang involved. Chairman, ah, tapos first, saka second, commissioners. So, tatlo lang yan. 
Ha? So, kung natalo ka sa COA, your MR was also denied. Remember that the motion for recon ha? is a condition sine qua non. Ha? In a Rule 64, in relation to Rule 65 ha? petition, in going to the Supreme Court. Ha? So, Commission on Audit na deny yung MR mo, then you can go to the Supreme Court. Ha? Walang bank to, kasi tatlo lang naman sila doon. So how many days do you have also? You also have 30 days. And that is fixed. Ha? You cannot extend it because it is provided by the Constitution. Ha? Now, why is it that the decision of the COA is also final and executory? And you need to secure a TRO and or injunction because COA ha, or the Commission on Audit is the holder of the purse of the people. Ha? Sila yung may hawak. So, kailangan i-execute agad. Ha? So, recapitulating the three constitutional bodies, civil service, Rule 43. Ha? So, you can go to the Supreme Court, ha? original 43, punta ka sa Court of Appeals, mayroon kang labing limang araw, extendable to another 15, total of 30, provided you file a motion for extension and pay the corresponding fee. Decision of the CA, then you can go to the Supreme Court under Rule 45, Raising only purely question of law. And so far as Comelec and COA are concerned, Rule 64 in relation to Rule 65, your grounds are grave abuse of discretion. The reason why in filing a petition for certiorari under Rule 64, you always state in relation to Rule 65. Okay? Now, balik tayo ngayon sa CTA sa kasandigang sandig bayan. Now, Remember, Sandigan Bayan, Court of Appeals, and Court of Tax Appeals are now co-equal courts. Ah, pare-pareho na silang affiliate court. Okay? Now, punta muna tayo sa CTA. Ano ba jurisdiction ng CTA? If ah, the tax in question involved is 1 million and above. And therefore, if it is below 1 million, where is the jurisdiction? RTC. Ha? So, kung tax case from RTC, where do you go? You go to the Court of Tax Appeals. Ha? You don't go to ha, the Court of Appeals. Ha? Kasi ang jurisdiction niya, 1 million pataas. Now, if you lose in the first or second division, you cannot go to the Supreme Court directly. Ha? You need to go to the bank. Ha? How many days do you have? You have 15 days. What should you do? File a petition for review. Okay? Now, if the decision is affirmed uh, by the bank coming from the division, you can still have uh, the last recourse or last remedy. Uh, you utilize Rule 45, raising only purely question of law. Okay? So, yun yung period. Uh, uh, can you file an extension? You cannot. Ah, dito, ah, first, second, nakapix yun, 15 days. Now, pagka bank, ah, aakyat ka, pwede ka bang mag-file ng extension? Answer yes. Ah, raising only purely question of law. So, mayroon kang original 15, extendable to 30. Total, 45. What should you do? Motion for extension plus payment of docket fee. Ah, now, when do you do this? Ah, within the 15-day period. Para makuha yung 30, ah, then you will have a maximum period of 45 days. Okay? Now, ang sunod, it is natin yung Sandigang Bayan. Okay? In the Sandigang Bayan, there are seven divisions. Okay? So, ano yung common measurement or gauge para mapunta sa SB? There are two landmark decisions here. One is the Lima versus Guerrero. Okay? And Ampungan versus Sandigan Bayan. Now, dito sa the Lima versus Guerrero, ah, Senator the Lima, according to her, ah, 
uh, when we filed a motion to quash when the case was filed with the RTC <laughs> lupa, uh, salary grade niya ay 31. Okay? Because allegedly uh, 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 the justice motion to quash denied uh, from the RTC Senator Dilema, Dilema went to the court okay, on certiorari. Uh, so ano sabi ngayon na Uh, uh, through Mr. Justice Belasco, an in-bank decision. Now, while it is true that the salary grade of Senator De Lima is 31, so nandun siya sa cap ng 27 and above. Uh, however, of 9165, nowhere uh, Uh, on record or in, in the decisions of the Supreme Court uh, which provides uh, that uh, even if your salary grade is the same for uh, because of the substantive law uh, which vested exclusive original and exclusive jurisdiction to try 9165 cases uh, with the RTC. Now, another landmark decision uh, is the case of Ampungan uh, versus Sandigang Bayan. Ano ba nangyari dito kay Ampungan? Ampungan was the city vice mayor of our hometown in Iriga City. Uh, a case for policy of public document and violation of RA 3019 was filed against him uh, Uh, with the office of the Ombudsman. Because, accordingly, he made it appear uh, that uh, in the selection uh, of the position of uh, Secretary of the Sangguniang Panglongso, the Pega City, he made it appear that there was a deliberation uh, where in truth and in fact, there was none. Uh, and therefore, he committed falsification. Uh, he also uh, used his position as Vice Mayor, uh, took advantage of it, Uh, pay for uh, one of the applicants uh, to be appointed as Secretary of the Sangunian. So, Ampungan filed a motion to quash with the Sandigang Bayan because Vice Mayor as below Salary Grade 27 sabi niya, oh, wala kayong jurisdiction sa akin. Okay? Now, assuming but without admitting that the crimes were committed violation of the Penal Code violation of RA 3019. Ha? RTC ang may jurisdiction in this Sandigang Bayan. It was denied by the Sandigang Bayan, ang Pungan went to the Supreme Court ha? and uh, the Supreme Court ha? denied the petition. The Supreme Court said through Mr. Justice Peralta that even if the salary grade is below 27, ha? if the charge is for violation of RA 3019, original and exclusive jurisdiction belongs to the Sandigang Bay pursuant to its original charter of presidential decree number 1606. Okay? Uh, also from Iriga City, ay ang dawang kaso ang tandaanan ninyo rito. Ah, paborito ito ah, na laging itinatanong. Okay? Now, doon naman tayo, balikan natin yung bank. So isn't it that the Supreme Court has three divisions? Okay? Now, if you lose from the first, second, or third division, ah, tapos na ang kaso mo. Ah? Now, can you go to the bank? Ah? Now, the answer is yes. Ah? There are at least 11 to 14 exceptions. Ah, one of which if the question is purely question of law, ah, to serve as a guidance for the bench in the bar, ah, etc. Marami. Better memorize it. Okay? Now, Ano naman yung landmark decision dito? Ah, Laya Junior versus a ah, Philippine Veterans Bank. Ah, ano naman yung kwento nung kay Laya Junior dito? Laya Junior ah, was the chief legal ah, of Philippine Veterans Bank. PBB ah, offered ah, an early retirement program, program ERP. Okay? So, Uh, Laya Jr. Uh, 
uh, did not avail the ERP. Kasi uh, sabi niya, uh, hindi pa naman ako 65. Eh, 65 yung uh, retirable age sa private sector. So, hindi siya nag-avail. Tinanggal si Laya Jr. Uh, nag-file siya sa labor arbiter. Talo. Inakyat niya sa NLRC. Talo pa rin. Uh, inakyat niya sa Court of Appeals. Talo pa rin. Inakyat niya sa Supreme Court. Uh, in a division, talo. Last ditch effort. Uh, Laya Jr. Uh, filed a motion to repair the case to the bank. Citing are the exceptions. Uh, so, the Supreme Court reversed the findings of the division Ah, kasi in-bank ito ah, and promulgated a decision in favor of Laya Jr. Stating among others ah, that an ERP is a voluntary one and not compulsory. Ah, so therefore, ah, if Laya Jr. does not want to avail ah, the ERP, you cannot compel him ah, ah, to embrace the early retirement program of the company. Okay? So, I hope ah, ah, nakapagbigay tayo ng linaw ah, ah, tungkol dito sa ah, jurisdiction ah, and appeal ah, in uh, uh, civil cases under the rules of civil uh, procedure. And you take note ah, 11576. Okay? Ah, so, pagkakabisado kasi ninyo ito, ah, at least mayroon na kayong bala ah, na 25 first question in the 2021 bar as to whether you can file a motion for extension of time ah, uh, to file notice of appeal. So yung mga naging reviewee ko who attended my lectita ah, yung uh, Moya 3 ah, eh Kabisado nila, there is no such thing as motion for extension of time. Okay? Hindi ka pwede na magpa-extend ng notice of appeal. Reason, eh one page lang yun. Ah? Uh, hindi na kailangan ipa-extend yun. Okay? So, MTC, RTC, uh, first and second level courts, recapitulate natin, uh, was already amended by RA 11576 in so far as personal and real actions are concerned. Ha? Uh, Yung MTC, 2 million pababa. Ah, personal, real action, 400 pababa. Ah, RTC, 2 million plus 1. Kaya nilagyan ko na ng 1 ah, para hindi na kayo mag-isip. Ah, more than 2 million kasi yan. So plus 1, more than 2 million. Ah, 400 plus 1, more than 400,000. So section 19 ah, and section 33 ah, BP bilang 129 as amended by 7691, was further amended by 11576, which took effect on August 21 of 2021. Okay? So, in effect na yan, because the Supreme Court had already issued uh, uh, an administrative matter for the implementation of 11576. Okay? Now, pagdating sa Court of Appeals, dito, uh, magkapantay na sila, uh, Court of Tax Appeals, Ah, and the Sandigang Bayan. Okay? Now, pagka natalo ka sa Sandigang Bayan, okay, in going to the Supreme Court, ano ang tatandaanan mo? Now, remember, ah, ah, Rule 122, ah, Section 3C in relation to Rule 124, Section 13, ah, C. So, if the crime committed, ah, if, if the penalty imposed ah, by the Sandigan Bayan is reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment, ah, in going to the Supreme Court, you merely file a notice of appeal. Okay? Pursuant to that rule. Now, ah, if the case is originally filed ah, with the Sandigan Bayan, ah, dito mismo, because the salary grade is 27, Ah, even if the penalty imposed is less than reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment, ah, you can file a notice of appeal. Okay? So, you have 15 days. Now, reason. Because the Sandigan Bayan is not only an appellate court, it is also a trial court. 
Ah, so di ba originally pan sa MTC inakyat mo sa RTC notice of appeal. Originally pan sa RTC, ah, iaakyat mo sa court of appeals, you merely file a notice of appeal. As an exception, if the RTC acted as an appellate court, a petition for review. Now, the same thing with the Sandigang Bayan. Ah, if the penalty imposed are like plunder, okay? So, plunder is punishable by life imprisonment. Ah, so, if the penalty imposed is reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment, in going to the Supreme Court after the denial of your MR, ah, then ah, you merely file a notice of appeal. If the case is originally filed with the Sandigang Bayan, you lose. Ah, MR denied. In going to the Supreme Court, ah, you merely file a notice of appeal. Because Sandigang Bayan is not only a trial court, but it is also an appellate court. Dual ang function niya. Pareho din ng RTC. Dual ang function niya. Trial court siya, at the same time, appellate court sa mga kasong nanggaling sa MTC. Okay? So, kabisado muna, Sandigan, uh, Court of Tax Appeals, Court of Appeals, MTC, RTC. Na NAPIS rule, applies. Now, there is no quibbling that in civil cases, uh, you have the landmark decision in NAPIS versus Court of Appeals. Uh, this is a uh, justice corona decision. Okay? So, after the denial of the MR, you will be given a press period of 15 days. But the question is, how about if in criminal case, uh, you are convicted, motion for recon denied, uh, uh, can you avail uh, the 15 day period under the NAPIS rule? The answer is yes, pursuant to the case of you versus Tatan. Okay? So, Per Mr. Justice Breon. Ah, so, po pwede na mag-appeal ah, ng press period na 15 days even if it is a criminal case. Okay? So, I hope uh, nakapagbigay ako ng kaunting kaalaman ah, regarding the uh, jurisdiction in civil cases. Mabibitin kasi tayo. I hope to see you in the bar review. Ah, uh, madrawing natin lahat civil sa criminal mas mahaba kasi yung uh, criminal procedure dito because dalawa pang gagalingan uh, ng uh, uh, jurisdiction okay pwede kang magpal sa ombudsman uh, uh, against government officers and employees or even private individual if there is an allegation of conspiracy uh, also with the office of the city or provincial prosecutors ah uh, uh, all criminal cases, whether covered by the regular or summary procedure, lahat yan ay manggagaling sa fiscal. Okay? It's up to the public prosecutor whether uh, to conduct a PI or not. Uh, so if the crime committed is punishable by at least four years, two months in one day, matter a bright. Okay? Now, if it is less than, punishable by less than four years, two months in one day, matter of discretion. So, if the public prosecutor uh, sees to it upon evaluation of your complaint and uh, evidence attached to your complaint of David, uh, that uh, there is no need to conduct a PI because the penalty imposable is less than four years, two months, and one day pursuant to Rule 112, Section 1, uh, then the public prosecutor can file the information in the municipal or Metropolitan Trial Court. Okay? So, thank you very much and welcome to Villasis uh, Law Center. Uh, I hope to see you uh, in the Bar Review proper uh, which will uh, start, I think, this June. Uh, uh, good luck to the November. I hope there will be no more pandemic uh, uh, and uh, the situation will be normalized. Okay? Thank you and good afternoon.
only adjust me is to search warrant or warrant device, nobody else. That is very important. And before it judge me, you should search warrant or warrant of arrest. What are the requirements? First, there may be probable cause. Number two, to be determined personally by the judge. Number three, after examination under oath for the complainant and the witnesses may produce. Number four, particularly describing the search, place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized or arrested. Those are the requisites before a just be issued search warrant or warrant arrest. But first of all, take note, only a just be issued search warrant or warrant arrest, nobody else. That's why uh, it's still pending on the Supreme Court now, diba? Article 3, paragraph 3 of the family code, we have the provision for a marriage ceremony. Now, in our jurisdiction, we do not recognize unceremonial marriages. There must be a marriage ceremony. The minimum requirement is that the contracting parties must personally appear before the solemnizing officer and personally declare that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of at least two witnesses of legal age. Now, even assuming that there was no uh, witness here, the marriage will also remain valid. That will be considered a mere irregularity that will not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, under Article 26, Paragraph 1 of the Family Code, all marriages solidize... Felony within the contemplation of Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code as a general rule, threat to spouse, that is threat, that is a felony. Tinatok mo sa saktan eh, papaluin eh. Pero in this case, the threat to spouse is a justified threat to spouse due to the circumstance of no? uh, defense of property. And second, the threat to spank was made in the exercise of a right under the self-help doctrine, Article 429 of the Revised Penal Code. Owner, owner or lawful possessor of a thing has the right to exclude others from the enjoyment or disposal thereof. And for this purpose, he may use force which is reasonably necessary to pre prevent or repel an act. to do it, to talk about issuals of a warrant of arrest, is to follow blindly the finding of probable cause by the prosecutor, precisely because the prosecutor determines probable cause for the filing of the information in court, whereas the judge determines probable cause for the issuance of warrant of arrest. So, okay, okay. Pero sa issuance ng search warrant, as mentioned, it should be proven. In other words, my friends, the judge must personally conduct an examination of the complainant and the witnesses um, that he may produce under oath or affirmation. The examination by the judge must be proven. Okay? It is not enough to merely adopt the questions and answers asked by the, by a, by the previous uh, investigator, during the PI. Magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kailangan po the judge should personally examine the complainant and the witnesses. So these are the...
Only I just me, Yeshua says, warrant or warrant of us, nobody else. That is very important. And before it just me, Yeshua says, warrant or warrant of us, what are the requirements? First, there may be trouble cause. Number two, to be determined personally by the judge. Number three, after examination under oath of the complainant and the witnesses may produce. Number four, particularly describing the search, place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized or arrested. Those are the requisites before a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest. But first of all, take note, only a just be issued search warrant or warrant of arrest, nobody else. That's why uh, it's still pending on the Supreme Court now, diba? Right? Article 3, paragraph 3 of the family code, we have the provision for a marriage ceremony. Now, in our jurisdiction, we do not recognize ang ceremony requirement is that the contracting parties must personally appear before the solemnizing officer and personally declare that they take each other as husband and wife in the presence of at least two witnesses of legal age. Now, even assuming that there was no uh, witness here, the marriage will also remain valid. That will be considered a mere irregularity that will not affect the validity of the marriage. Now, under Article 26, Paragraph 1 of the Family Code, all marriages solidified. within the contemplation of Article 4 of the Revised Penal Code. As a general rule, threat to spam, that is threat, that is a felony. Tinakot mo sasaktan eh, papaluin eh. Pero in this case, the threat to spam is a justified threat to spam due to the circumstance of no, de uh, defense of property. And second, the threat to spank was made in the exercise of a right under the self-help doctrine, Article 429 of the Revised Penal Code. Honor, honor or lawful possession of a thing has the right to exclude others from the enjoyment or disposal thereof. And for this purpose, they may use force which is reasonably necessary to pre prevent or repel an act. Issuals of a warrant of arrest is to follow blindly the finding of probable cause by the prosecutor, precisely because the prosecutor determines probable cause for the filing of the information in court, whereas the judge determines probable cause for the issuance of warrant of arrest. So, okay, yeah. Pero sa issuance ng search warrant, as mentioned, it should be proving. In other words, my friends, the judge must personally conduct an examination of the complainant and the witnesses um, that he may produce under oath of affirmation. The examination by the judge must be proven, okay? It is not enough to merely adopt the questions and answers asked by the, by a, by the previous uh, investigator during the PI. Magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kailangan po, the judge should personally examine the complainant and the witnesses. So, it's our thing.